Yo, thank you. Ah, bukod pa ng atil nya, kung may cooperation na, association na ka, um, Dennis Baron na, thank you. Nungo um, na kunya opportunities kunya, and Youth Indi Foundation, the boards, thank you very much for my opportunities here today and this morning. Thank you. I'd like to also introduce the, um, the crew, the team of Little Yolngu Tourism Corporation. Can we have a big cap, cap clap for this? <laughs> I'm standing here as humble, young man, young, proud, good person. And uh, my surname is Boronga. And Boronga is the tale of the Jigong. And um, I'm standing here proudly and strong not at all, but short. <laughs> My father's a, a strong and a tall person. <laughs> wow. Well, it's a long story, but I like to make it really short. Thank you very much for coming here and listening to our beautiful stories. Significant and sacred stories and it's the time of Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people to stand strong rights for their own economic and also rights for businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, my story is about creating a new economy through Arnhem Land. Lirui is a powerful name. Lirui actually is a sacred symbol of fire. When you hear Gumaj people saying we are sacred, the fire and the tongue is represent my people as Kumaj. Literally is so insignificant and sacredness. I like to also, when I found Literally, I have to go around to many elders to get information and sacred authority from my people. So Literally actually is create a a new economy right across the Arnhem Land where Aboriginal people in this region to have our own businesses right across and then to the white dominant world. What I mean is to get information and, and you, all your people right across in Arnhem Land where literally actually holds from here to where Air Force swamps. Air Force swamps is where Roman Guinea area. So we were working really hard Literally, it's just, just a small beginnings. It's a very important for Aboriginal people when we have us, because of their languages and our understanding about the business world. Remember, because Aboriginal people were working with it in another places, what I call we were working with Macassians for many and long time. We were, we were the first traders to another country. Ladies and gentlemen, the new economy is talks about the reconciliation, talks about the educations, where literally staff and in the homelands, where Aboriginal people live in the homelands, there's no access, planes, no access for coming to, to town, clinic, educations. But they have educations in our own rights, where I call Bush University, where literally it's all about sharing knowledge, the sharing knowledge to the dominant world. It's about the curriculum, the main Subjects where young people have our own subject. We have a subject that has not recognized 
in a dominant education. We are creating something special, not only for the corporates, the tourism, we also working very close in education as well. Because 90% non-indigenous people want to also to understand the Yolngo philosophy and Yolngo knowledge. What I call, it is a bush library. We won't burn, it grows and grows again. The knowledge is important and significant. It's all layers and layers and layers of information and layers and layers of education. Little we talks about economics. Little we talks about the opportunities, employment and training for Aboriginal people. And Little also talks about talks about how Yolngu can have our own businesses. We look after many uh, Yolngu people right across in Arnhem Land, including play school, Bulmun. That's where we stopped. So it's a hard, not a easy. It is important the tourism industries in this region must work. Must work because it's a, what I call it's a new beginning of the tourism. It's another tourism when you see big buildings, when you see Chinamen taking photos. This is what I call life-changing tourism. This is the life-changing of tourism where non-Aboriginal people open their beautiful hearts to honor and respect one another. Literally, it's all about sharing knowledge. Literally, it's all about understanding the knowledge about one another. We have many supporters, especially with a lot of corporates and the schools. And this is vision and dream. But ladies and gentlemen, it is important. When I say it is important, life changing is about understanding because it's a touch of the spirituality of our Aboriginal people in Arnhem Land, where we fluently speak our own language. Sometimes there's a 13 languages that we understand, and English is 14. So it is important. Ladies and gentlemen, I really want to um, say really thank you and opportunities for, uh, to share this information. And uh, two years ago, me and John, John Moores and Matt Gruby sit together. I had a vision and dream about the master plan in Arnhem Land. And this master plan talks about 20 years plan for tourism in this region. Can we have a big clap for master plan? Can I just close this and hand over to John Morse? Ladies and gentlemen, people that have supported us at federal government, Northern Territory, and all the businesses, corporates, you are so champions because we must work together, create an economy in this region because this place of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, Jawa. Good morning, everybody.
Thank you. <laughs> there is nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. The time has come for a new future for many, many people in Arnhem Land. And it is now, and there have been some extraordinary things happening. We stood here a year ago and talked to the Gama audience, probably many of you were there, and talked about our ambition and where we were heading with the master plan. And one year later, as someone who's been involved in business and travel, including running Australia's national tourism body for many, many years, by any measure, by any measure, what has been achieved in the last 12 months is something quite extraordinary. And what you see in this cultural tourism master plan and what you heard about from Jawa and what you will hear about from me is a practical example of something that is happening that has been talked about for the last two days by people who are far more eminent than me. This is being done. Jobs are being created. A new destination for Australia is being developed. Your new people are embracing this concept, this vision, which is not my vision, it's Timmy's vision. They're embracing it like something I have never ever seen before and that all says to me the time has come. The vision for Lirui and the vision for the master plan is a very, very simple but very powerful vision and I'll just read it to you. A better social and economic future for all your new people through sharing our culture with visitors to our country, Arnhem Land, Yolnu Land. And that vision is what drives everything. This development of, this master, of, the, of the tourism master plan and Lirui tourism is being done in a way that I don't think has ever been done in this country before in a way that we're all very, very proud of because at the heart of every single decision, every single strategy, every single direction, at the heart, the front and the back, is your new rom, your new law, your new culture and your new people. It is not about Balanda telling your new how to live their lives, how to operate, how to develop business structures. It is about your new driving a new future for themselves. And for me, it is a huge, huge privilege to be involved with something so strong so important and so powerful. Four years ago, Jawa started Lirui Tourism, an ORIC corporation, a not-for-profit corporation, I think with one staff member. That was four years ago. Two years ago, Jawa and I and Matt sat on this very escarpment and said, this is going to be important for all your new people and came up with a concept of developing a 20-year master plan, and it, it, really is, it really is a great vision. All the achievements that have happened, and I'm not going to list them all because there are far too many, has happened because of three key things. Firstly, the intelligence, the passion, the desire, the cultural knowledge of the all-new people. And two years ago, we went right round northeast Arnhem Land and talked to many, many communities and many homelands. And there was a universal, 100% sort of support for the concept of developing small cultural tourism businesses on homelands. It's the old new people who are really driving this, as I've said. It is about being able to stay on country. It is about keeping the culture strong. It is about economic development, it is about jobs, it is about social justice, it is about sharing the culture to the benefit of a much wider, wider world. That's the first, the first key reason for the success so far. It is also about the support of many, many friends, many government, many government departments, many corporates, and I'm going to come back and talk about that later, because a key part of the development is about partnerships, real partnerships, a new way of looking at partnerships. And the third, 
The third key reason is these amazing people from Lurie that you see sitting here. Matt Gruby, an extraordinary man. I, I used to, as I said, I used to be CEO of Tourism Australia. I don't know of anybody else in this country who could do the job Matt's doing. He's doing an amazing job. Thank you. basis for three months. Put your hands together. She wants to stay, but her visa's expired. Is anybody from immigration here? We need a visa extension or a handsome young man for her to marry so she can stay. And this young woman who I met, um, a young Barkindji woman who I met in Alice Springs 12 months ago. Kirily, Kirily Lofoff, um, who was working at Tourism Australia, who wanted to come here for three months again to do voluntary work. After she leaves Arnhem Land, she's off to Nepal or Tibet, and after that to the United Nations World Tourism Organization. This is a young woman who you are going to hear a lot more about in the future, I promise you. Give her a hand. <laughs> advisor, an extraordinary man with an extraordinary background. His father, Wungu, was the king of Arnhem Land. <laughs> he is the last born of Wungu's 50 children, and he had 30 wives. <laughs> Waka has one. <laughs> Arian Pearson, East Journey. who is going to grow and develop and become a much stronger part of Lirui. And I see a huge future for this man. And a man I only met a couple of days ago, Phil, who everybody here knows him. I, really, I get in food queues and I keep hearing people say, oh, I wish was Phil was back here doing the food. Give Phil, he's helping us out. But I, I see a future for him in this area as well. Give Phil a hand. So that's the team. That's the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not about mass tourism. This is not about coach loads of people gawking at communities. This is not about resorts on homelands. This is about one thing and one thing only. Your new people sharing their culture with people from all over Australia and all over the world. It is a new way. When we first started, the all new people decided they wanted to develop guiding principles for tourism and there's some really strong and powerful guiding principles and today as well no but not before i go to that i just want to talk a little bit about partnerships because we would not be where we are today without some extraordinary organizations and some extraordinary people helping us i'm not going to mention everyone because there are far far too many but i do want to mention a few organizations um, who are in the who are in the audience firstly um, a man who's been with us since day one when I went to Canberra and said, we want to develop, or the Yolnu people want to develop tourism. Jerry Van Wyck from what is now uh, the tourism division of Austrade. Where are you, Jerry? Over there. Give him a hand. This man has been with us all through. And he was, in, he was responsible for us securing a grant of $825,000 to kick, kick the whole project off. Thank you, Jerry, for your ongoing support. And next to Jerry is Karen Jacobson. And there's no point in talking to Karen because she totally lost her voice and she can't answer you back. Um, and also, not in any order of importance, um, an organisation that I admit to being a little bit cynical about at start, and now I'm their greatest fan, the Jarwin Indigenous Partnerships. Where are you all? Thank you. Karen, Karen Bayliss and her team. We, again, we would not be where we are today without you. Um, Rio, to anybody from Rio Tinto here, a, a strong and ongoing partner. Um, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, our biggest corporate client and one of our greatest, greatest supporters. Ian Rev, the CEO, has been up here. Um, just, um, where's Jennifer? Jennifer Leveser. Thank you, Jennifer, and all your amazing team. And Qantas, Jason, 
Is Jason here? There he is. Give a thank you, Jason. Even though <coughs> from the end of next week, Qantas are not flying here. That's a commercial decision. We accept that. Air North are taking over the routes. Um, Qantas have pledged to continue support for the Yolnu people, for Arnhem Land and for Indigenous and Tourism. And they do much more than most people ever recognise in this Indigenous space. I personally have worked with Qantas for many years. I'm a great fan. Um, the only other, I guess, couple of things I want to mention in that regard is that we are forming amazing partnerships um, with the Indigenous Land Corporation. They were here last week. Um, and also, I don't know whether Chris Fry is here from IBA, but um, they are going to be a really important part of our future as well. And finally, in partnerships, I, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention, if I didn't mention um, the schools. We have three groups of key visitors. We have our corporates come here for, for corporate um, three-day uh, co cultural awareness tours. We have massive numbers of school kids come here. And I know there are a whole lot of uh, principals from Melbourne here, uh, mainly from Melbourne. And I would just like to say to those people I applaud you for your vision in understanding that by bringing the young leaders of tomorrow here to experience your, uh, to experience your new culture is going to, in the end, mean a much better country for us all. So I applaud all you guys. There you are sitting up. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and I just want to, um, I just want to, r to sort of wrap up by making four key announcements of things that we have concluded over the past few days. The firstly is the development of the master plan. This is our Bible for the next 20 years. This, what you see, that's actually the summary. It's a much, much bigger, bigger, and, and, and that's happened because of all the incredible partners we have in areas like risk management, in branding, um, in legal, in, in every area of business development. And those people, they work so bloody hard for us, and they're doing it all out of their, their, their vision and their passion. I just want to read you our, our introduction to the partnerships in the master plan. These are Yolnu words, not my words. We place great value on the contribution by our partners and supporters and now have a group of dedicated, professional people who believe passionately in the Yolnu people, our culture, Lurui and the master plan. All our partnerships are based on mutual respect, mutual responsibility and two-way learning. This is the right way. This is the right way. Um, thank you. So this is the master plan. The second thing I want to announce is that two days ago, our new website went live and it is sensational. Everybody is raving about it. <coughs> www.luritourism.com.au. Have a look at it. It will bring you to tears. The third thing um, I'm mentioning, is, and Timmy did allude to it, is our new brand identity. This was a collaboration between designers in Sydney and a wonderful, wonderful um, artist from, from Baniola, um, Nongirana, is that how I pronounce it? Nongirana, um, Marawili. And she designed the, f the fire, which Timmy talked about, and, and fire has such a deep, deep meaning for Yolnu people. It's about comfort, it's about safety, it's about storytelling. And beneath the fire, you have the many, many layers of charcoal, which is the meaning of Lirui, which don't go, which go down into the earth, and they also go back to the, to the history of 60,000 years. It's a very powerful name and a very powerful symbol. So we have our new identity. And the last thing I want to announce is that um, on the website, we have announced two new tours which will commence in September. One is a tour called Gewu, which is Yolnu for Dilibag, and it's a women's only tour, seven days and six nights, going to two extraordinary homelands, Bawaka and Ninike. Um, this, and this, the second tour is, what's the? Yolnu Duka, which is a, a, a tour to several different homelands, um, and that's a mixed tour. Um, if you want more details, I promise you it will be an extraordinary experience all on the website. So, can I just finish with another quote like I started? Now, I think it's a quote I used last year, but it doesn't matter because when we started this, people looked at us strangely and said, you'll never do that. Nelson Mandela once said, everybody says it's impossible until it's done. 
ladies and gentlemen, in 10, 20 years' time, we will have a very, very different situation for the economic people in Arnhem Land, the Yolnu people, and I am very, very proud and honoured to be involved with them. And thank you to my friend and to Matt, for all the staff. For This is just an incredible group of people. They work seven days a week. They work their hearts out to make a difference to Australia. Thank you. Thank you.